all right welcome back welcome back to um me humiliating myself <laughs> no i i did feel i don't increasingly i've been feeling more frustrated with my lack of progress and i know it's because i don't force myself to speak Finnish enough. Um, especially when I'm around people who are speaking Finnish. And I'm just like, I, I can get the gist of what the topic is. But then I can't really follow what's actually being said. And I certainly can't respond, you know? I want to change that. Also, my internet is, is crap. Uh, so, you know... <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I hope it's, am I even going to be able to stream today because it's at zero kilobits per second? I, I'll start the, the stream off with complaining. <laughs> I'm sorry. I actually did go today to get the adapter, um, and then ethernet cable to see if it really is my Wi-Fi sucks. I don't even know. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, JS. Yeah, we're having. I was kind of hoping it. <sighs> Let me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I guess I'm only sorry because it's 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 been this ongoing problem, and I can't. And I I feel like I should have done more to solve it by now. Yeah, less than one frame per second. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I can see my kilobits will shoot up to 4,500, which is the minimum that YouTube requires for smooth streaming. And uh, and then I'll just get throttled back down to, to zero. Um, long adapter. Just like... <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I don't know why. <sighs> yeah, I got, I got a Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter. And the funny thing is, my old Mac uses a uh, Thunderbolt. So I was able to test the internet uh, using the, um, the, the cable. So I was able to connect and everything and it ran really fast. But it wasn't noticeably better than the Wi-Fi at that time of day. Um, and then, I mean, it was on my old computer, so I didn't, you know, pull up OBS and try to, you know, do a test stream on there. It would be kind of pointless. I'm just going to go back and hopefully uh, find the correct one. I need a USB-C adapter, not Thunder. I don't know why I thought Thunderbolt was also USB-C. They look very similar. <laughs> like if you're just looking at like the profile of it it's the same width but the i guess the the thickness of it is i mean it's a different a different plug so sorry yeah we're it's this has just been like the theme of the week just i'm late you know and the and the, the reason is i i went for a long run and then I didn't have any food, so I had to cook and I made pizza. Yesterday, I burned myself. That's a fun story. I can tell you about that, though. It's also kind of hilarious because the you can't even see the burn. But when I burned myself, oh, you can you can bet your bottom dollar. I was dramatic about it. You know, like when you get burnt, Okay, I have to explain how this happened. All right, actually, what if we go, what if we go here? Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. I'm sorry that the the stream is just completely crashing, so. Um, oh, it's repeating words? Yeah, it shouldn't matter if I'm using the Wi-Fi or the cable between the computer and the router yeah it, it really shouldn't because like my i when i when i run the speed test it, it gives me really high speeds in the browser like just whatever the ookla speed test but then whenever i try streaming 
it just completely dies and and everything else is running totally fine on, the, on my computer so i know it's not like my um like my cpu or my gpu um You see red? <laughs> Wait, did the screen? Did it just die? Yeah, I'm just looking at the the frame rate. I'm I've lost 40% of all my frames. So, let's take a deep breath and just Yo, you see my face? My face is quite red. <laughs> yeah, because I got back from a, a long run. Could it be YouTube? You know, even when like, oh, I, when I follow, I really only follow one other streamer on who's who streams on Twitch, and uh, and he's been having a lot of issues with his. I don't think his are as bad as mine. But yeah, he also has been having a lot of issues with, and it's it's with his his ISP, so it's not. It's just it's really frustrating because it's like you can't really. That's the other thing. It's kind of like if my internet keeps doing this, and my my ISP is Telia, if they don't fix it, then I can't do anything because I can't buy internet from someone else because it's fixed into the housing association. I mean, at least I don't think I can. I don't know, maybe maybe I could if I asked, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure like I I can only get Telia service here. So I'm, I'm not sure. You guys are all just getting kicked out. Yeah. But yeah, welcome in Vlad27, JS, Lorelei, Lorelei the Flyer? Or is it Lorelei Flyer? I don't know. You tell me. Reload. Um, yes, it's just been quite a week. Uh, yesterday, I burnt my hand and uh, that sucked. It hurt quite a lot. And you know, like, you know, I live alone, okay? And one of the disadvantages of living alone is you don't have someone else around to reassure you that, you know, you're going to be fine. You know, like, just to help allay your fears. Um, and so I burnt my hand. So let me explain. I stopped making pizza a while back because it's just a real pain to make pizza. It's honestly, it still is quite a, I mean, literally it was very painful yesterday. And I found this new recipe for making pizza in a pan. And the idea is that uh, you can cook the bottom <clears throat> in the pan and then you put the pan in the oven. Well, I made my first pizza I actually made on Sunday and I remember being like, this is really dangerous because the when I take the pan out, I have to remember that the handle is blazing hot. I mean, it's like the maximum, you're supposed to put your oven on the maximum temperature, right? And you only put it in there for a couple minutes just to finish the pizza in the pan, the top of the pizza, or the, the toppings. When you put like whatever the sauce and toppings on, you put it in there so it gets that top down heat. And uh, the first time I did it, it worked pretty well. And I was very careful. I wrapped dish towels around the handle on Sunday. But then yesterday, I did that. I, I forgot. I was just, I was busy inspecting the, the pizza. I was like, oh, let me see the pizza. How does it, did I leave it in long enough? I don't know. And then, oh man, I regretted it so fast. Just, I was like, oh, maybe if I move it, like it's, it's so natural to grab the handle of a pan, right? That's, that's like the safe part of the pan. Dude, like I'm just making a new rule for myself. I am never putting the pan in the oven ever again. I don't trust my brain to remember when I take it out, not 
not to whatever, you know? And so... I, oh, so yeah, the thing is, Jess, I did not take the pan out of the oven with bare hands. That was, that was the easy part. I took it out using, you know, the whatever. I, I just have like some kind of folded up dish towels, right? And I took it out, put it on the, the stove, and then I didn't cover the handle with the dish towels like I did on Sunday. And I just went to grab it. Like, so <laughs> you won't even be able to see actually you can kind of see there's like a, a little red mark right there i i don't know the internet is complete crap right now so uh, maybe if i just hold my hand up you can kind of see it yeah and actually there's another kind of red mark here too uh so yeah it was like thankfully i have cat-like reflexes i'm like you know, I, I'm actually Spider-Man, if you guys didn't know. So I was like, boom, I got my hand off of there. Uh, but it it hurt a lot. Oh, at first, it hurt a lot, and then it stopped hurting. I put it under, you know, cool water and just kind of was like, oh, no, how bad is it? You know, I hate that feeling of like, oh, what if it's really bad? And then I have to go to the doctor. What if I have to go to the ER or something? And what if... I can't use my hand, you know, like, cause like I, ha my work is all like on the computer, you know, it's like, I need to be able to use my hands. And then I'm just like, what a stupid thing for a pizza, right? I'm probably not even saving money making this pizza because of the electricity to run the oven, <laughs> right? right? Like, and all the ingredients as well. It's just like, and it was a huge, effort to make i hate making pizza dough and i i, I don't know if i'm or, i'm just gonna finish off this batch of pizza dough so uh yeah so i grabbed the handle while i was you know inspecting the pizza looking at the pizza thinking oh i want to see and i just touched the handle really quickly and oh man it really hurt um and so then it started hurting again and i couldn't tell how bad it was because I, you know, and I, of course, you know what I, you know, you got to do in this situation is you just start, you know, doom scrolling WebMD and Google image search of like burns. And I'm like, is this a first degree burn or a second degree burn? And uh, I, you know, I'm looking at all these like cartoon illustrations of it. I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't have blisters yet. How long does it take for blisters to form? What if it's, what if I burned, what if it burns so deep? You know that because it's like some burns are painless, but then my hand really started hurting and uh, and I was like, OK, I can't I can't do this. And I devised a plan and my plan was I'm going to the pharmacy because they were still open. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go to the pharmacy and I'm going to ask a ph the pharmacist, you know, because I I didn't have any painkillers. I didn't have any whatever burn cream ointment right so i was like at the very least i'll go and get those things and and then the pharmacist will be able to look at it and be like oh you know actually you need to go to a doctor or something you know don't so right or not right because if the pharmacist is like oh you don't need to go and then i can i can rest my weary heart yeah, yeah, everyone self-diagnosed with Google. Well, that's the thing. It's kind of like the, the more that you start scrolling. Also, because like there were things where it's like, oh, it isn't such a bad thing. You know, you should be fine. Just don't put ice on it. You know, there's all these things that like do this, but no, don't do that. And it told me like put antibiotic ointment on it. I did have some of that. So I put a little of that on there. And then... Um, what was the other thing? There's something else. Oh, and it's like, don't, it's like you, you don't normally need to go to the doctor unless the burn is on your face or hands. And I'm like, that's my hand. Do I need to go? You know? So then I'm like, well, I, I'm just going to go. I mean, I'm going to go to the pharmacy. So I go to the pharmacy and uh, when I get there, something changed from when I left my apartment and walked whatever, like 10 minutes to the pharmacy. By the time I get to the pharmacy, my hand doesn't hurt at all. 
something about just moving my body and maybe being out in the cold or something. I get there and I kind of sheepishly explained to this pharmacist. I was just like, hey, so um, I'm, I might look, I need some medicine for like a burn. I burned my hand uh, while cooking earlier and I, <laughs> and I, and I, sh I show her my hand. You couldn't see anything like it was <laughs> maybe it was also just the, the lighting. All right. But it was just humiliating. I'm like, I burnt my hand really bad and there's not even a mark on my hand. It's just completely blank. So I have to like point it out. And the best part was I still had the antibiotic ointment kind of on it so my hand is kind of glistening and then she's like well what did you put on it and I was like oh this antibiotic ointment she goes oh you shouldn't do that <laughs> and then I was like and then I had to ask I could have inferred from her demeanor that you know this wasn't a serious problem but I, I needed closure and I asked do, do you think I need to go see a doctor about it <laughs> I'm just holding out my blank palm with no marking on it. And she just goes, no. <laughs> but then she's like, okay, but I would recommend for the pain, you can take this. And then if you want the cream, you can take that. And so I was very glad that I got that. And that's actually something I really like about pharmacies here in Finland that is not you don't have in the US. The pharmacists... Like, they walk around the store and help you. In the U.S., the pharmacists work, like, behind a counter. Like, they'll never come out and, and just help you with over-the-counter medicine. I don't know. Maybe they would if you go and ask them, but I don't know. It's I feel like it's more accessible here. Maybe, maybe that's just my impression, though. So, yeah. Um, burned my hand. And, uh, and so then I walk home feeling simultaneously really embarrassed but also deeply relieved like the embarrassment was worth it to to and just relief knowing that like okay i don't it's not that bad i, I and i got my medicine and i got my you know i and because i was like i was worried that what if my hand hurts a lot and i can't sleep and then i'm then like that you know that's that's even i don't know so i was at the very least i'm like even if it hurts quite a bit which it, it had already kind of stopped hurting at that point. I did have the ibuprofen to help. So that was my saga yesterday. And uh, and I, I, I vowed I am never putting the pan in the oven. It's too dangerous. And it's not worth it. Like, you only have two hands. I mean, if, if you have two hands. I don't know. Maybe you already lost a hand or you didn't have one. I don't know. But, like... This is such a precious resource. I don't want my hands to be burnt for a pizza, you know? So I learned my lesson and I, I did it differently today. I made another pizza, but I tried a different approach that personally I think is better. Not just because it's safer, but it actually produced the best tasting pizza of the three pizzas that I've had so far. And what I did, I did pretty much everything the same, except instead of putting the the pizza with the pan i just took it out of the pan and i put it on a baking sheet but then I, I made another mistake guys this is just what's been going on all right i put the baking i put the pizza on parchment paper which is usually oven safe right well not when you have the oven on max 250c with the the top down broiler right and i'm putting the pan directly like in the top shelf you know right beneath the the top down heat uh i put it in there and like a few seconds later i'm like it's, how is it already burning and then of course it's the the paper the parchment paper isn't rated for 250 degrees celsius or whatever so i don't know maybe that's the key maybe you need to burn the paper to add a little carbon to season the pizza but i switched it i took it out and switched it to foil and uh and it was oh my gosh also i'm just gonna give you a tip and i kind of i was thinking i should make a video about this because as a vegan pizza 
pizza is an important part of life. And I am going to make a bold statement. And I, I haven't heard anyone else make this claim. But so why do you have cheese, right? Because cheese, it's creamy and it has lots of fat, right? That's its main purpose on the pizza. Why? Now, this is my claim. Why put cheese on it? And there are vegan cheeses, right? You could, you could, but I don't do any of that. Partly because I think they're expensive for what you get. And because I prefer the, the taste of olive oil. So instead of putting all of the fat from the cheese on your pizza, just go, just go straight to the olive oil. But don't put the olive oil on when it's in the oven. It's a topping at the end. Olive oil is always best fresh because the temperature can like change, like denature it or something. I don't know. But yeah, so that's my contention. When you take that pizza out and you're... And you gotta season it liberally. All right, you gotta put the oregano, you gotta put the basil, lots of salt. I put salt and pepper on my pizza. All right, I don't, it's like I, I treat it like, I don't know, it's like it's a pasta or something. Or, and I put olive oil and balsamic vinegar, drizzle a little of that balsamic on there. Everyone that I've made pizza with, has been like, this is kind of weird. But then they eat the pizza and they're like, actually, I, I really like this, you know? And the, and I drizzle that olive oil on there. I don't just drizzle it, I glug it on. And you can bet today, I glugged that olive oil. I didn't care. I was mad that I burned the parchment and I, and I ran for like two hours. That's also why I'm kind of late because I'm I'm trying to do longer runs now and I can't run in the morning on Tuesdays and so I went for a really long run and I was really hungry so I was just glug 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 with that olive oil on there and oh. and the best part about the the pan pizza it's a thicker crust and I think it, it it's better I don't, it, it absorbs that olive oil so good that's mm, that's where it's at Okay, sorry, I've totally ignored you guys because uh, I went on my pizza rant. My internet is crashing, I apologize. <laughs> so I gotta go back up. Uh, <laughs> um, hey Sam, welcome. Sorry if I, I missed you earlier. Am I planning to stay in Finland for good? Yes. I mean, as far as I can see. Who knows, I'm not, I don't really plan too far in the future but i really like life here so i'd like to to remain so that's my my goal but i i'd have to renew my residence permit uh uh like a little at the end of 2024 and then and then we'll see <laughs> we'll see if i can make it again so far i've you know i've i've been pretty good about getting my residence permit here i've been really lucky as well um oh 27 your mom works at a pharmacy well she's doing good work all right the the pharmacies are so helpful and if you think about it as an american the fact that i can just walk into a pharmacy and get like free medical advice right like it's not like you're getting a diagnosis but you're just getting a base level of kind of like preventive care or you know what i mean like just immediately you can just and they're trained to help you and be like oh if you have this issue or that and then if they think that it's serious they'll be like oh you actually should go to the doctor you know for that so uh that's it's so important to have that kind of stuff because we don't really have that in the u.s and then you go to the doctor and you end up getting tested and scanned and you walk out of there and like, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in medical debt, you know, and then the only way to get it reduced is to demand from the hospital an itemization of everything that you're charged for. And then it turns out the hospital's like, oh, actually, uh, we just made the numbers up, you know, and then you have to hire a lawyer to go through the 64 page itemization of the receipt for you being there and, and, you know, haggle with them over the prices. They're like, <laughs> 
it's like one ibuprofen that you had there costs like $20 <laughs> and, it's, it's, and it costs like one cent anyways that's uh yeah well say say thanks to your mom on my behalf uh <laughs> So I feel I feel foolish, but I'm also really relieved that the burn seems to be pretty superficial, first degree burn, um, and my full functioning of my hand. So, uh, am I going to make it? Yeah, I should have gone in there and be like, "Am I gonna make it?" <laughs> but yeah, no, that's it's just yeah, the things that happen when you live by yourself long enough, and you're just sort of like you don't have people around to reassure you. So you got to go and find it somehow, especially in those moments where like something kind of bad happens and you're like, oh, shoot, like I'm actually in a lot. of, And it was a lot of pain. Um, but then, it, you know, it pretty much stopped after that. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got a good medicine cabinet. Yeah, I have like nothing. I don't really I'm really lucky that I don't have many problems and uh, so i never really need like painkillers or whatever and yeah so but then in moments like that it was like oh shoot i don't have any anything it, it, it just in case right because it was hurting quite a lot i was like i don't think i'm gonna be able to fall asleep with it like this but anyways we will do finish by the way we will learn le finlandais all right we will speak it we will poo-hoo it. So hooving. All right. Uh, <laughs> a baking lesson this week. Well, look, I kind of want to make a pizza video now. Be just to warn people, do not do the pan in the oven pizza. That is, that is death. Do not like. And the funny thing was like when I did the pizza the first time, I was like, oh, this is actually really dangerous. Like. I'm totally going to put my hand on the handle, which is why the first time I was so careful. And then the second time, of course, you know, yes, it was an adventure. And uh, the best part was then I left a voice message for my sister uh, explaining uh, how embarrassed I was that I went to the pharmacy and showed my hand and there were, you couldn't see anything. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that was uh, good. Uh, no. Um, oh, the texture of the mozzarella. That's true. Yeah, you know, that's one thing, I guess. The, the texture of the cheese. But I like to add other toppings. Like the pizza I just had, I'm like, I always go for uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Uh... Kalamata olives. Do not put black all get black olives out. We don't need black olives. They taste awful. They're trash. They're trash olives. Kalamata olives. Top tier olive. All right. Put some of those olives on there. Put some jalapenos. Get some jalapeno business on your pizza. All right. And uh and I just get all of that just straight from the jar. You know, so then it's super easy. You don't have to do any chopping, nothing. I mean, you could put some like fresh bell pepper or something else on there. I don't know, but yeah, sometimes I'll put cashews. I did, I, for, I just forgot to put cashews this time. But the thing is you can't put the cashews on at, uh, when it goes in the oven or you have to like take the pizza out near the end, put the cashews on and then put it in for like 30 seconds because the cashews will burn. Whereas the other toppings, they, the other toppings need to get crispy and crunchy and caramelized, all right? Especially the the uh, the sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, those are the best. They're the best. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, so the streets, it was a pretty bad, pretty bad weather for running today. It was pretty bad. But, you know, I felt pretty good. I, I felt pretty good on the run, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, citizenship is the goal. I mean, we'll see. We'll see if I can learn Finnish. That's, that's something else. Or I just got to switch to Swedish, you know? 
Yeah, the healthcare model is so different in the U.S. from from Finland. Uh, and so, yeah, moments like uh, like yesterday made me really thankful that I could literally just walk 10 minutes, maybe less, to the pharmacy and and get like really quick help, you know. So, you know, big big improvement also actually when i did go to the, i did have to go to the hospital back like in 2018 i i got uh, a disease from a tick this actually like this was really scary it wasn't life-threatening the disease is called tularemia it, it it's a kind of a rare disease uh it's also called rabbit fever and it is a bacteria bacteria i think that attacks your white blood cells and you don't really realize that you're getting sick i didn't even realize i had been bitten by a tick it wasn't for like a, until a few weeks later when i was on a road trip with one of my best friends that i was feeling so bad that we went to the hospital and yeah and i got diagnosed i got the antibiotics and it was a, overall a really good experience at a hospital and i walked out of there you know, without paying much. I paid something, you know, but it was so small compared to like, in the US, it would have been like 10 times easy. Um, and they, they, everyone was so nice there too. Also in the US, they wouldn't, I don't, because it's such a rare disease to have in the US, I, I, don't, I don't think they would have diagnosed it. But the doctor, it was in Kusamo. The doctor there was like, she knew immediately. And she even found, she looked at my shoulder and I had like a, a little, whatever tick bite that hadn't healed and she's like oh yeah it's probably that so anyways so yeah that was that was scary because it the disease changes your personality it's kind of like what like rabies you know but it's not rabies but it makes you really irritable so if i come across as very really surly and irritable and ugly yeah, that's look i that's not me that's the 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 tularemia that is that's dormant in my system and it flares up all right i cannot be held accountable <laughs> for when i am uh not on my best behavior or in the best mood <laughs> i can blame it on tularemia now i was perfect until tularemia knocked me knocked me down and what was scary about it is like i it, I don't know. It, it really felt like my personality had changed and I just became like a meaner person. And I was just like, I was just kind of grumpy all the time. I don't know. It was really scary when, when some, when you realize something so crucial, right? To your identity of like how you behave and how you perceive things and how you perceive yourself suddenly changes all because of a bacteria that's that that's crazy and it just makes you realize like how fragile life is you know <laughs> all right that's yeah but yeah actually there are strains of that that disease tularemia that a lot of people died from because it can cause pneumonia and people would get it from hunting because it was carried by rabbits and so if you were like skinning a rabbit it could it could get aerosolized and if you breathed it in, you know, so a lot of hunters got it. And that's why it was called rabbit fever. So there. Um. <laughs> the audio has been steady. It's Lorelei the flyer. All right. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. The favorite part of the stream was it cutting off exactly when you said something like, if my internet keep, keeps being like this, <laughs> it knows it knows all right okay well thank you guys for entertaining me i feel better having vented uh the the finished learning stream is just a front all right it is a front uh for just me uh venting and feeling some sense of validation um but let's uh let's let's do a little finish all right now Last time, I still I haven't done my Duolingo yet today, uh, but I would just like to brag that I have been on my best behavior with another perfect week in the book. All right, look at that. A perfect year so far. I mean, I'm doing only one lesson, you know, just to 
to get the streak. But I don't actually I don't want to start with um with Duolingo. I might do Duolingo after the stream. I do it much more quickly. Um instead I got the book. So we could maybe do some Force of Finland stuff so that because I feel I feel kind of guilty that last time uh we didn't do any of it. <laughs> Uh, and I've already spent quite a bit of time just complaining. But yes, yeah, you know, and the weather was so nice on Sunday. It was beautiful. It, like you, it couldn't be better where it's like it, it's below zero. It had snowed. So the snow was like this nice compacted snow. I went for a long run on Sunday, just like perfect to be out. It was sunny yeah, it, and it wasn't too cold or too windy. It was just like nice. Uh, but today, all that changed. Everything melted and it was miserable. But I don't know. It's it's also a mindset thing, you know. If you if you got the right clothes and shoes, you know, it's like it's not such a big deal. All right. We should do another, um, let's do another one of these. All right. Let's see. I go like that. Okay. You guys can see this, right? Yep. I mean, maybe you can't. I mean, I don't know. The stream might have died. I mean, it, 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 it's been kind of steady lately. So hopefully uh, the viewing experience is, is okay. Um, have I ever planned on collaborating with other English speaking YouTubers like Dave Cad and Luke Bland? Um, I've never planned to. I've never met them, actually. Um, I don't really have like a reason why. It's not like it's not like I've avoided, but. I don't know. I, it never really occurred to me of like, oh, this would be a great idea, you know, of like this is, would be a great collab. Um, but I'm not I'm not like this. I'm not necessarily opposed, but no, I've never. I haven't I haven't met many of the other uh, YouTubers. The only like kind of person um, that I know is the guy that runs Helsinki Facades. Super cool, dude. Uh, and like he has the best, it's like the best Instagram, uh, channel. It's just, he, the stuff he publishes is like the highest quality. You know, I love it. The, the photos are great and the stories, the effort he puts into writing, you know, the history of the buildings that he photographs. I love it. So I'm really glad that I got to meet him. It was really cool. He's really nice. Um, yeah yeah no i mean there's i could always do that kind of stuff but uh like i don't know i kind of pulled away from just making good old-fashioned youtube videos you know like i i it it just it gets really stressful and i don't enjoy it and so then i that's why i like just to do the streams and i learn finish with you guys i like i like to kind of hang out rather than spend a lot of time alone making a video i guess you could collaborate with someone right but you're still kind of just in your own bubble and then you publish it and then people react and then you're back to making another video and kind of grinding out all these ideas and it never i don't know i i, I didn't start my channel to be like a uh, finnish a foreigner in finland influencer I, it was really just like a personal vlog uh, and and then I made a few videos about Finland that I don't know people were like grocery stores oh yeah let's <laughs> I just did that randomly you know but then it kind of people kind of, I don't know maybe because of those few videos people are like oh he's one of like the foreign youtubers in Finland and it's like yeah but not really I don't know I didn't really start my channel to be like that that's who I am now I'm gonna make you know I, I guess part of the problem 
is I, I like to do too many different things. <laughs> and it, I'm not, you know, a lot of the people who are really successful with YouTube are successful because they, they focus 100% on it, right? And partly because they don't necessarily, a lot of them, not everyone, but a lot of them felt like they weren't good at anything else or they weren't receiving much validation in other areas of their life. And then suddenly they, were, they got YouTube and they were, they, were, they were good at it and people liked it, you know? And so there was like a good feedback loop and it kind of, you know, encouraged them to do that. Whereas for me, I don't know, I, I, it's not that I got bad feedback, but I got a lot of good feedback in other areas. Like I liked being a teacher and I like learning things. That's my problem. I like to learn perhaps too much. And so I, I've gone back to school so many times. Most YouTubers like drop out. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I dropped out of YouTube to go back to school just because, right? Just I'm like a curious person. And so, so yeah, that's kind of, I get, I don't know if that really answered the question, but um, yeah. And I guess that's the thing. If the collab doesn't happen naturally, it can feel weird and forced and yeah and the other thing is like when you get to be an adult i mean maybe you guys i don't you you know this but it's like people are so busy <laughs> I, like i my my friends barely have enough time to hang out with me and they're like my best friends <laughs> and so then it's kind of like you know it, it's a lot to like try and meet new people as you get older um and it might feel weird, you know, like to be like, oh, hey, let's hang out because we're both YouTubers and I'm, I want to feel you out if you're going to be a good collaboration partner with me or something. I don't know. It just, uh, it doesn't have to be that way, you know, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. But I know a lot of people have asked i yeah because it's a popular thing to do and could be interesting but i don't know i like doing my own thing as well you know just living my life um okay let's actually do something for real what is what is this which one am i on so yeah i did this one the gecko mora high set the wood ants Okay. Talvi Poroxesta. Here I Oh my gosh. This is the this is this can't be a real word. How many Montu Kimalice Kuningatar. Well, I know that that means king. Kuningatar, because it's it's not a Finnish word. <laughs> I mean, it's a Finnish word, but it's from like Swedish or whatever. Um, I don't know what any of that means. Mantu, mantuki malais. All right. Anyways, um, saw bayun kukista kevan. And see, Ravintos, Ravintonsa, yeah, Mutto, Mutto Matkalta. Wait, that's one word. Mutto Matkalta, Matkalta, Palanut, Palanut. Why do I feel like that means no? Pelatus is service, right? Pelatus, palanut. I say I don't know what most of these words are. <laughs> I have no idea. Deal, 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 tall, te, lai, da, huen. Hyön teis ravintoa kukista. Okay. 
So just looking at this, I have literally no clue except King. I am going to guess that this is referring to a Kingfisher because I remember well, I don't know. Maybe it was in another book. I think it was in this book. There was a Kingfisher. I've been reading a lot of nature books lately. But yeah. Gimalainen is a bee. And also my internet's dead, so. <laughs> I apologize on behalf of Telia and their terrible <laughs> service. Uh, um, line and B. Monthu is weird, obscure word for ground. Really? There's an extraneous T in Lota. Let me. Do oh, you're right. Thank you for that. Thank you for catching me, JS. I had mistyped it. So that means to find. Some is Ravin. Ravinto. Something about maybe food, like Ravintola is a restaurant. Um, Coquista. So this is winter something. <laughs> I feel like I've heard this word before, but I, I don't know. Something about a bee here. Gets. Sara. Payun Coquista. No idea. Kevan is spring. NC, doesn't that mean first? Ravintonsa. Food. Or meal. I don't know. And something about the ground. Was that the. Or no, Mantu is for, for ground. Yeah. You've got Telia and it works just fine. <laughs> Don't rub it in, 27. <laughs> oh no, maybe there maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope. I will I will figure it out. Um let's let's actually take a look at the English translation that they provide. Page 15. I'll also show you guys the picture. Oh, it's a bee. It it, it says the white-tailed bumblebee queen. Oh, Kuningata is that queen? Kuning, Kuningas maybe is king. Um, the white-tailed bumblebee queen that has woken from hibernation gets its first nutrients from the springtime willow flowers. And the chiff chaff. <laughs> what? I don't even. I don't know if I've ever used that word in English. The chiff chaff. Uh, and the chiff chaff that has returned from migration finds its insect nutrients from flowers. I'm gonna, I'll type it. I'll type it out. I'll show you guys the, the picture in, in a second. I mean. It's not that incredible. It's just a bee. All right. The, what is it? White-tailed bumblebee queen that has woken from hibernation gets its first nutrients from the springtime willow flowers. And the chiff chaff that has returned from migration, finds its insect nutrients from flowers. Boom. See, my typing in English is top tier. All right. So <laughs> I would just like to acknowledge that I'm good at some things and probably wasn't even that great. Actually, I want to see what does Wiktionary have to say about Chiff chaff. <laughs> what, what is this? Chiff chaff. The echoic of the repetitive chiff chaff song. A small common warbler. 
It's a bird. A chiff chaff. I've never heard of this. I mean, I've heard of a warbler, but I've never heard of chiff chaff to refer to the warbler. Wow. I guess it's, yeah, because it's from the UK. Chiff chaff, chiff chaff. Interesting. Yeah, maybe, maybe we don't use it in the US. Hard to say. I will make a note for the chiff chaff that it is a warbler. So, mutomatka migration in this context. Ah, oh, okay. So, it's like literally land trip. <laughs> uh, and it's from migration with the alta. So, mutomatka alta. From migration. As it yeah, returned from migration. So, okay, so I'm guessing this word is the white-tailed bumblebee? No. That came... That's, that's obviously not the correct... What am I doing? That's hiber winter hibernation, right? It's got to be this. <laughs> it doesn't even fit. But you know what? How do Finnish people make slides? Because if you're if you have these gigantic words, what you just like put a little hyphenation there or something? Do you have to do that like every on every single line on your slide because you can't fit the text boxes in in the. <laughs> Um, Bayun Kukka is a catkin. Yes, a catkin is the, I learned this recently, actually. It is like the, the thing that comes, uh, that's part of the willow tree. They, the willow produces catkins. It's like a type of pollen thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I make less typos in English for some weird reason. Yeah, I know. I don't know why. <laughs> um, not a land trip, a moving trip. Oh, really? Ah, okay. Uh, may yeah, maybe I miss. I messed up. Oh, mantu. Sorry. What you said earlier about mantu, I got that confused with muto. Yeah, which now that you mentioned that, it's like that that means moving. Or like change, right? Or I think it's related to the same word for change. Um so cool. Okay, the white tailed bumblebee. But what chemo lice? What was the someone I maybe did someone say what oh chemolinen is a bee. So, Kimalai. So the queen bee. So like the the land bee queen. <laughs> oh man. Well, actually, let me show you guys the um the picture. It's probably not you. I don't know if you'll be able to see this at all, but there you go. Look there. There it is. What a beautiful bee. And I guess that's a catkin on the willow. That's where it goes and gets pollen. Dude, it is so important that we have insects. They, they do so much for the world. And not just pollination. Like our soil would be nothing without insects and arthropods. And an insect is a type of arthropod. They do all the heavy lifting. It is incredible. The more that you learn about 
how interconnected everything is in nature and how connected we are to it. That's we got to we got to protect the biodiversity. OK. All right, where were we? Was there something else I wanted? I guess I could. Um, this could be interesting. Let me look for images. Oh, there we go. Wait. Monthukimolainen. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um Can I just copy copy the image and Actually, let me It is Bombus Lucorum. I'm, I'm getting a photo for us. One second. There we go. I don't think that that is a catkin. But it's uh, doing some important work. So there we go. If you hold option, you can uh, keep it centered option okay bees are disappearing yeah and we need all the different types of bees and not just bees it turns out that like wasps all these there are so many wasps and beetles and flies and moths that also pollinate and there are like certain plants that require like one one very specific species of insect um and it also it's really important that we have dead wood in our forests and that's one of the big problems with managed forests that if you're just growing trees in a kind of monoculture and you're not allowing the trees to die well first of all just to have a diversity of tree types and then allowing trees to get old and die it's like the dead wood is like the most important resource in a forest uh, and it provides a home for all sorts of bird species like woodpeckers only nest in dead wood i, I don't say only but they prefer uh like standing trees that are dead like because the microclimate inside a dead tree is better than trying to i guess in a, a large one and then other birds that need the woodpeckers to make the holes so that then they have a nest because woodpeckers make a new hole every year and uh it's kind of yeah it's really and then there's so many beetle species that need trees it, it's in, it's yeah they need dead trees that is um so there we go I I recently have gotten very interested in insects. I literally have like 27 nature books checked out from the library at the moment. It's a problem. Like I can look over at my bookshelf and there's a lot. I have <laughs> I've been reading. So actually hold on. Maybe let me show you. Okay. Actually, let me restart the music as well. We got to have our background music. <laughs> I have so many books. <laughs> Here we go. Hold on. Oh, I'm still on the big screen. I didn't even realize. Here we go. How to read an insect. This is really good. It's got a lot of good stuff about 
bugs. It's, I mean, it's really good. Like, how do I explain it? It's kind of like an encyclopedia, but it's very like accessible. So it goes through a lot of the science, but like in a way that is easy to understand. Um, but it doesn't just like, like this other book, for example, this was a good book, Extraordinary Insects. I finished this book recently. Um, the first few chapters really good. The last half of the book was kind of underwhelming. It was it, it it focused a lot on kind of like oh here's an interesting case, and I kind of felt like it pulled punches, if I can use that expression of like the book starts by saying like it's so important we preserve the natural world and whatnot, but then just basically showing how like bugs are important for like grow you know growing more monoculture crops basically and like i don't know and and then like i what it was like oh we can researchers are figuring out how to get cockroaches to go into burning buildings to like help rescue people or something like this and it's just sort of like i don't know i feel like the stories that like insects are insane like the lives that they lead are just stranger than any science fiction that's ever been written like the way that they <laughs> they live their lives it's and there's some of that in here actually and that's why it starts off really good but then it ended kind of like in a way of like how insects are useful to us in like i don't know a way that was just sort of like it just didn't sit right with me that it kind of ended on this note like insects are only valuable insofar as we can extract value from them. I haven't started, I haven't really read this one, but yeah, the butterfly effect would be interesting. I've got, I got way too many. Uh, guys, this is only scratching the surface of all the books I got right now. I'm making the librarians work, all right? I'm making sure they're not just sitting back there doing nothing. All right, they got to go and get all my books on the because I, I reserve all the books. So they're <laughs> I, I, the uh, I, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, this is a really good book as well. Insect Museum. This one actually will give you like a really great um, overview of the bug. It'll talk about like the origin of also known as the marmalade fly, which alludes to the ornamentation on the abdomen, as does the species name, which originates from the Latin Balteus, centurion. The genus name Episurphus refers to its lineage with the genus Surface, from the Greek epi, meaning on, over. Okay, that's a little much. All right, I didn't really need to know all that. But there's some interesting stuff in here. Um... You know, there's something crazy I learned recently about there's literally a species of moth that lays its larva on a leaf. And when the egg or it lays the egg on a leaf, when the egg hatches, the larva just falls down to the ground and it emits pheromones. Actually, I don't know if they've fully figured out how it does this but it tricks nearby ants into thinking that this is one of their own larvae. And they're like, we got, why is a larva outside the nest? We got to bring it back. So they grab it. And even though it doesn't look anything like one of their own, uh, the, the fact that the, pher the pheromones or whatever tricked them into bringing it back. And then the other crazy thing they found out is that, so they, fe they feed the larva, right? Because they think it's their own. So it keeps growing and growing. And then the larva starts making clicking noises. And the researchers think that the clicking noises uh also communicate to the ants a like like a social hierarchy that actually certain ants will make clicking noises in a way that puts them higher in the ranking or something like this and so they think that this larva is like they're kind of like a new queen almost right so they just keep feeding it and feeding it and then of course the larva it also eats all the other ant larva and it literally just kills the entire colony and it's like that's that is crazy but yeah anyways also i love beetles by the way 
Beetles are beautiful creatures. They do so much important work. They are they clean everything for us. Dung beetles are maybe my favorite. We we have a dung beetle here in Finland. It does not roll around balls of dung like the famous ones that you see on TV, you know, but it's not glamorous like that. It does its job more discreetly. It's called the door beetle and it's black with blue trim. It's really beautiful, actually. Uh, it's like you'll see them in the forest and um, and yeah, they actually dig holes in the forest. They're one of the few beetles that raise their young by feeding them. Um, and they, they dig holes into the thin the ground. And that actually digging the holes is it has a really important purpose for, br for bringing nutrients from the top of the ground deeper so that it can be more accessible uh, to roots deeper down. Uh, so it's, it helps cycle nutrients because they take de dead and decaying matter down those holes to feed the larva that they, you know, lay at the, the bottom. It's kind of crazy. The world is crazy. This is the world we inhabit and it blows my mind. And I feel like I've only got this one life to learn all of this, right? Some people, and it's like, Prior to this time, people didn't really know. Not that people weren't in touch with nature, because I feel like in a lot of ways, people were much more knowledgeable of nature than we are, d despite the encyclopedic scientific knowledge we've generated, right? Another good, oh, okay, we're, I, I gotta show you some more books, hold on. Oh yeah, this. This is a good one. Oh, I have so many books. Well, I'm not gonna show you all of them. Yeah, okay, I have, I will, okay, for dramatic effect, I'll show you this one. This one and this one. And where's the, oh yeah, this one. Okay, just three more books. Bear with me, all right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I gotta get, oh, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. Give me a second. I gotta hear the music. Sorry, I'm like totally ignoring you guys. <laughs> yeah, the force in the natural state is really needed. Um, oh, primitive bee trapped in amber, lived in a jungle a hundred million years ago. Yeah, no, that is also crazy that we have insects trapped in amber from hundreds of millions of years that oh my gosh insects have been been around for like 475 million years it's that's a lot wow that's that's so weird i'm using the library as intended thank you js yes i'm validating the librarian's work they're like they they're like thank god this tyler guy keeps keeps making reservations so that you know it <laughs> we uh we we can keep we, our our jobs are still uh you know important um yeah no insect cookbooks yeah that was another thing it was just like in that other book i just showed where it's like she's like oh maybe we should all start eating crickets for protein and i'm just kind of like uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's why I felt like she was kind of pulling punches. Like she just wasn't, she, she was focusing so much on like how they could be useful within the current system and the current way of doing things. And it's like, oh, and they would be so much more environmentally friendly, this or that. And it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to criticize it too much, but the book, it kind of, it was also written in, a dumb uh, maybe that's too harsh but it kind of felt like she wrote it in a dumbed down way that it just was sort of like well i don't know i feel like i i should justify the, that criticism i don't have an example but um the yeah the zombie and parasite fungi yeah that's also like the oh yeah 
evolution is kind of crazy in one of i was watching a, a forest documentary recently where they talked about how that like when a species becomes too um what's the word too successful and they're reproducing so much it can create like an imbalance but that imbalance also creates an opportunity for another species to find a niche with that that uh you know that that uh, well with the the successful like if a beetle species becomes really uh successful there there there, there will be a not incentive because that's, that's the wrong thing it's not like individual animals or fungi whatever are trying to evolve uh rather it's just by chance right there's more opportunity for a fungi to figure out how to exploit this really successful species because there's a bunch of them are available they're they're coming into contact with them more and more and so then of course a, a fungi develops a kind of parasitic whatever and then those these fungi kind of hang around and just the, do the due to the law of statistics right many of those beetles or insects or whatever they are uh they they don't go extinct because the fungi can't kill all of them but if they they grow too pop populous is that the word right and then the fungi will take hold and will spread really quickly and knock down their population um and that way then whatever plants that were being destroyed by those beetles or ants or whatever can continue living right so it's it's like this constant conflict uh it's really really quite interesting when you the deeper you go it's um yeah um yeah the crickets as food trend went away <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know it's uh yeah dung beetles back is not just black it's shiny and refracts green light oh really okay i know there's many different kinds of dung beetles are you are you jf are you referring to the one here in finland maybe there's more than one in finland but i'm just thinking of the one that i've i've seen it looks pretty dark it might be like a really dark green but and the the crazy thing is like the closer you look at the 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 structures on the back of the beetle it's not like it's just a pigment it's literally their their shells or whatever exoskeletons uh have microscopic structures that absorb and reflect light in you know at certain wavelengths which can give them this like metallic appearance and also that this like they they might look really shiny and weird to us but in their natural environment with their natural predators who have different eyes than we do they see the world quite differently uh they've evolved for the eyes of like the birds and whatnot so they're they you know they're more invisible to them even if they're quite shiny to us but also the the shininess it, i think i read it was believed like it helps them blend in in a more tropical environment where like the leaves are quite glossy and maybe wet um yeah okay a couple books <laughs> all right i got this one I, there was a reason i was gonna mention this uh oh sorry you guys okay braiding sweetgrass wow this is such a good book you know when you're reading a book and you kind of just want to cry because it's beautiful and sad but you're not crying because it's sad you're crying because it's beautiful and she's talking about like her her childhood in the u.s as an as an american indian growing up very poor like in oklahoma her relationship to nature and kind of how she inherited this relationship to nature you know because of her you know her heritage uh but also growing up in a way because you know american indians were deeply persecuted and removed from their their like traditional uh lands and, and relocated um 
and uh and so yeah it's really yeah it's there's something I, yeah this i think is a good summary it says up here a hymn of love to the world and i think that's what i i, I love about this book is like you can really feel how much she loves nature just for existing and for being alive and bearing witness to the beauty of it all um and she is a really good way i'm i'm literally i'm not even that far in the book and i i'm already like in love with the book i'm i'm literally on page 39 all right and even just these first few chapters like the way she talks about she has this whole story about strawberries and how Oh, that this this was so good. I have to I have to share it real quick. She talks about growing up and going out and picking wild strawberries, and how they were really poor and they couldn't get anything for their dad on his birthday. Except they would go collect wild strawberries and make him a strawberry shortcake. Um, and it was one of the most delicious things and uh, that they could make. And you know, the, and her her dad really loved it. And it taught her like an important lesson about how, oh, what was the quote? I'm, I'm sure I'm not gonna be able to find it if I look for it. I'll quickly, let me see actually. It's worth pausing for a second. Cause I, yeah, yeah, the gift of strawberries. Um, strawberries first shaped my view of a world full of gifts simply scattered at your feet. A gift comes to you through no action of your own, free, having moved toward you without your beckoning. It's not a reward. You cannot earn it or call it to you or even deserve it, and yet it appears. Your only role is to be open-eyed and present. Gifts exist in a realm of humility and mystery, as with random acts of kindness. We do not know their source. Um, and because and like she grew up in a... like in a gift economy. Hmm. We're almost always homemade. I thought that was the definition of a gift, something you made for someone else. We made all our Christmas gifts, um, piggy banks from old Clorox bottles, hot pads from broken clothespins, and puppets from retired socks. My mother says it was because we had no money for store-bought presents. It didn't seem like a hardship to me, it was something special. My father loves wild strawberries. So for Father's Day, my mother would al almost always make him a strawberry shortcake. She baked the crusty shortcakes and whipped the heavy cream, but we kids were responsible for the berries. We each got an old jar and spent the Saturday before the celebration out in the fields, taking forever to fill them as more and more berries ended up in our mouths. Finally, we returned home and poured them out on the kitchen table to sort out the bugs. I'm sure we missed some, but Dad never mentioned the extra protein. In fact, he thought Wild Strawberry Shortcake was the best possible present, or so he had us convinced. It was a gift that could never be bought. As children raised by strawberries, we were probably unaware that the gift of berries was from the fields themselves, not from us. Our gift was time and attention and care and red-stained fingers. Heart berries, indeed. Mm. And then she talks about how, um, she, actually, I can read it real quick. She goes, farmers around us grew a lot of strawberries and frequently hired kids to pick for them. My siblings and I would ride our bikes a long way to Crandall's farm to pick berries to earn spending money. A dime for every quart we picked. But Mrs. Crandall was a persnickety overseer. She stood at the edge of the field in her bib apron and instructed us how to pick and warned us not to crush any berries. She had rules, too. These berries belong to me, she said, not to you. I don't want to see you kids eating my berries. I knew the difference. In the fields behind my house, the berries belonged to themselves. At this lady's roadside stand, she sold them for 60 cents a quart. Yeah. Of course, those berries were 10 times bigger than our wild ones, but not nearly so good. I don't believe we ever put those farm berries in Dad's shortcake. It wouldn't have felt right. Yeah. 
there's really like this is such a beautiful book about life and nature i can't find the actual quote i'm thinking of i can't find it but it was something about how like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna find it this is yeah, the importance of how like a gift gains value the more that it's given and yeah so i really recommend this book so thanks for bearing with me and letting me read that to you for dramatic effect i got this big book i'll show that one to you as well um hey angelica yeah, you're welcome. Wild strawberries are the best. There's actually a really famous Swedish movie called Wild Strawberries. I saw it once like 10 years ago. I remember liking it, but I I haven't seen it. So I can't tell you anything about it. I should watch it again. Um, I, I might have nothing to do with the, you know, the, the story we just read. But yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, you, you posted a picture a vispi puro whipped porridge uh you made some for you and your brother that's nice here's this other book when i picked this book up off the shelf of the library like the reservations i was just kind of embarrassed i think i set a new record i uh yesterday i went to the library and <laughs> It is worth pausing to tell you this story because, you know, if you go to the library, at least here in Helsinki, I assume it's like this everywhere in Finland, but you go and you put in your library card, you scan it, you put your pin code in, and then you can view your reservations. I viewed my reservations and it couldn't even fit on the screen. All my books arrived at the same time. All right. It's not my fault that when I get interested in the subject, I'm just like, oh, let me reserve the top 49 books on the topic, you know, no big deal. Uh, and I, and then you can print the receipt. This is the best part is like, you can print a, res, a receipt that shows you, that tells you which uh, shelf to look at. Cause all the books are just put on shelves. <laughs> and I was kind of embarrassed that the receipt started printing and then it kept printing. And it was like, nee. it was like, it was the longest receipt. I actually, you know what? I have it. I'm going to show it to you. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Where would I have? I have it over here. Hold on. I'm, I, I know I have it. it. Where is it? Is it still in... Oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> it is like, OK, if I hold it from the ground, it comes up to my belly button. I couldn't even get all the books. There were two. I couldn't carry all the books. I have a book problem. That's a receipt, all right? That's, that is just how we do it, all right? This is how you use the library, all right? You go full research mode and you, you reserve every book from the library. Uh, <laughs> So my strategy is that when I go to the library, sometimes I'll go to the library and just pick up a, whatever I need and leave, especially if it's like something I know that I've been waiting for and I, I, I want to take home. But in situations like this where I'll put a bunch of books on hold without really researching each one, I'll just be like, oh, let me just I'll figure it out when I get to the library. So then I take a stack of books that I just checked out and I'll go sit in the library and I'll read the first chapter or so of each book or flip through it and then decide, okay, am I actually going to read this? Right. Or, you know, and so, um, I, I end up returning a bunch of books immediately. Uh, so I didn't even take home 
Oh, but uh, yeah, a lot of the books I just returned because I knew I was like, I'm probably not gonna actually read this. Okay, here's this this book. Oh my gosh, I love this. Is such a good book. I started reading it, and it's like flora inside the secret world of plants and it is a cornucopia of information and knowledge and i guess like lately i've been feeling like i really don't know much about the world or like what am, how do i it's like there's so much information and so much of it is just forgettable, like news, human culture related stuff, like, or just like pop culture, not just human culture, but like pop culture stuff that's happening. And, you know, it's so easy to kind of get caught up and to feel like that's the whole world. But like, can you tell the difference between an ash, an elm, a birch and an aspen? Right? If you looked at the trees, would you even be able to guess? Maybe a birch. But then actually, birch kind of is looks a lot like aspen. You know, I, and like the way that plants carry on their lives. It's so crazy. It's so complicated. A tree isn't just a tree. There's a whole network of like the fungi underneath the ground that connects the roots of the trees and enables them to communicate and exchange nutrients beneath the ground. It's crazy. And the ways that all the plants have adapted and like they have all these different strategies for making seeds, right? And doing, doing their tree thing. I just feel like I really want to learn more about nature. Because it's like the more that you know, the more that you realize how beautiful and important something is. I mean, not necessarily like you could know a lot about something that's terrible, <laughs> right? And you might that might encourage you like that. We need to change it, right? But this is something that's like, I really feel so strongly about how important it is that we preserve so much of our biodiversity. But I don't know if I really even understand what that means. You know, like on a fundamental, on a fundamental level, maybe I get it, but like on a more detailed level of like, what's actually happening in a plant, in a forest, right? And I have a forest book as well. It's, it's about as big as this one that they're oh, these books are so good is this an intervention situation jf this is my intervention to you guys to be more like me <laughs> all right if you all just checked out more books in the library and just got more passionate about nature the natural world I think you'd be happier. I mean, maybe you're quite happy already, and that's great. But you could be even happier, all right, with a nice appreciation for a dung, a dung beetle. <laughs> oh, man. Probably had to reload the machine for paper after that. That would have been the best. You know, that would have been so hilarious if, like, the, the, the roll had run out of paper in the middle of printing my receipt. And so then the library person has to come over and be like, oh, let me replace that. You know, it's like, oh, you got a lot of books there. All right, oh, I'll here, I'll reprint your receipt. You know, and then she prints it again. And it's just like, Ning, and she's just standing there watching it just pour out and wondering if maybe this is a prank. Like, is did he just, <laughs> like, uh, well, yeah, library will do it if needed. Especially if it doesn't return the books. No, I I'm very obedient. The one thing that I a problem that I have is that now, at least in Helsinki, they changed the rules so that if you don't pick up a reserved book, you get a one euro fee, which to me is a bit excessive, like because it's easy to reserve a bunch of books and then forget. I think I had that happen where like, 
I forgot about three books that I was supposed to pick up, but then I, I didn't get it that day and I went the next day, but it was too late. And then I was like, wow, I just had like three euros or more added to my account, you know? Whereas if you keep a book overdue, you only get charged 20 cents. Is not picking up a reservation really five times worse than keeping an overdue book? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, but the other thing is, uh, you don't have to pay the library. <laughs> well, I don't know. Is it? I I don't know what the limit is. Where once you you reach a certain threshold, where the library is like, we're just cutting off your account until you pay. I don't know if that exists. Because I've got, I've got not a lot, but more than, I'll say more than 10 euros in fees that I have not paid. All right. And it's just, it's just sitting there on my account and I'm like, let's let inflation do its trick. All right. <laughs> let's let inflation take care of that problem. All right. Oh man. Um, You've been study plant medicine. Ah, cool. Yeah, no, actually, I have another book about. Don't, don't I have a book about plants and like. Medicinal related stuff, I probably do. But I mean, it's I got a book on frogs. Amphibians are like. What is the word like the barometer? on an ecosystem's health. If the amphibians are gone, some you know, the, the ecosystem is in decline because they're like the more sensitive creatures. <laughs> A big book. Oh, yeah. Wow. Nature is so beautiful. Uh, there used to be an advanced reserve fee. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, maybe then we got it easy, you know? I'm just comparing it because they, if you didn't pick up a reservation, they didn't charge you at all. And that would happen occasionally. I didn't think it was such a big deal. So now it's like I go in and I have to check out the book. Or I guess I, ca I can cancel the reservation from within the system, you know? So if I can't go in, I just go on online and I cancel my reservation so I don't get charged. But it's like, that's the same thing. Like, that's the same thing if I just let it expire, you know? And then they put the book back. Or they give it to the next person. Yeah, at least in Tampere. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, maybe they have different... Uh, different systems. 15 euros? Oh, you have to start paying at 15? I think I might have passed 15. I don't know. Maybe they're just afraid that... Because they need me. I, I boost their statistics. I'm a top-valued user. Because they're looking out, they're like, who are the people who are the most active users that right because they they probably get evaluated where they're like how many books did we check out this week how many reservations were made how many reservations were picked up and you know and they're like who are our top users i if i am not in the top 100 of all library users in helsinki i need to up my game i i want to find out who are those top users because I I need to go and network with them. Like, what sort of lives do they live? They're probably just a bunch of old dudes or something. I mean, maybe I, old ladies too. I don't know. I, they, you know, I kind of want to get old. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get old. I just want to be retired. And then I have all the time to myself to just read books I'm like complaining. I, I actually like my work. So I, I you know, I, I don't I don't think my life would necessarily be better if I was just but it kind of sometimes it, sometimes it's tempting. I just want to go to the library and check out 47 books, each of which is like a coffee table book, you know, that weighs 10 kilograms. All right. I need all of them and I'm going to take them home 
And when I'm old, I'm, I'm going to be so hunched over from carrying all these books. My back is going to be broken. But by that point, technology will have advanced and I'll have cyborgs to carry my books. I love this future where instead of just using a digital reader, I, I have cyborg servants. I, I don't know. Cyborg means that they're part human. I don't know if I'm okay with that. Maybe just robot. Robot assistants who usher me like a, like the king that I am, all right? The, that usher me from place to place around Helsinki, carrying me to and from the library with my ancient tomes. Because in this this is a future like I get in my <laughs> in my head, uh, I live like 500 years. All right, I don't know about you guys, but a hundred ain't gonna be enough for me. All right, I'm just saying I've got 250 minimum. Um, uh, yeah, 30 euros for max fees at Helmet. Really? That's good to know. Because I'm uh, I'm like halfway there. <laughs> Though, you know, the funny thing is years ago when I first left Finland, um, after my first two years living here, I went back to the U.S. in 2017 uh, for school. And uh, when I was leaving, I went to the library and I offered to pay. I went to the library and I was like, and I only had like, three euros of fees it was something quite small and i remember the librarian was like oh uh, you can just go like you don't have to pay <laughs> i was like what <laughs> they're like yeah no you're good like i just i'm just gonna mark it off as you know i'm like wow i was like not from that moment i became a fully dedicate dedicated library aficionado and and soldier all right i will fight and die for the libraries of helsinki why because the three euros got wiped off my account and that made all the difference all right it's like it's like the gifts all right it's not the value of three euros as an economic currency or whatever it's the fact that a librarian saw me as a human and was like you know what we good all right and they bought my loyalty for so for for so cheap. <laughs> and yeah, you can get board games from the library. I I that, I've gotten a lot actually, a lot of board games from the library, um, and uh, and you get computer games. I've gotten uh, Switch games, um, but I haven't gotten computer games. I, they'll have a lot of console games, but I didn't know they actually had computer games as well. But yeah, the, the um, board games are great. Yeah. You probably react the same way to the fees, but you do recognize that it's an attempt to keep the books available. Yeah, for the ones who do. Yeah. Yeah, I try to keep track. I guess I actually wrote to the library requesting that uh they let you know because so the difference between okay when when you have a book that's checked out and then you need to return it the library sends you a reminder and they're like hey you have a book that's due in a couple days you better go return it or renew it you know i like having that reminder but if you put a book on hold zero communi well not zero communication you get a notification when the book is ready that's it and they don't notify you. And I said, could you guys, I asked, I was like, could you send me an email? Like, is there an option that I could get an email like on the last day to pick it up? So that I don't, you know, cause it's easy when you see that email and then you're like, oh, well I have all week to pick it up. But then the week goes by and you didn't find time and you just forgot that you even needed to go to the library. And then boom, boom, you get a couple euros added to your, your bill. Yeah. Yeah, the amount of Finnish learnt in this stream is immeasurable. I haven't even spoken Finnish yet. Oh my god. Oh, uh, it's a hard life. I really should. Okay, we're gonna do it. Hold on. 
Also, my alarms are start gonna start going off because it's almost nine. Here, I might I might turn I'll turn off the nine o'clock one so it doesn't interrupt us. But yeah, we'll get we'll set the timer maybe for ten minutes. I'll try to speak Finnish. I'm so thirsty. I ran so much. I ran like, I don't know what in kilometers, but it was like, I want to say 18 kilometers, probably. Oh. Okay. How do we do this? How do we speak Finnish? Um, Cuenca. Here we go. Let's do it, actually. Let's start. I'm starting the timer. Boom. Cuenca. Um, me. Oh, me. Suomea. Mitan? Vai Winka? Mixi A Quink. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Streaming is quite hard. Everything is, everything breaks. The, everything I have is new as well. <laughs> this microphone, even this, the, whatever, the adapter and my internet. So, I apologize. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So thank you for letting me know. It did glitch. So, okay, we're going to restart the timer. We we're only like a few minutes in. <laughs> but there's like, yeah, there's no way for me to know because I can't, you know, hear if it glitches. And I can kind of see it if I if I check, but there's too many things to look at, you know, to always see. So thank you for letting me know and apologies that it totally glitched out. I'm going to investigate what the deal is with the microphone and the Internet. I know I can actually contact Telia and have a, maybe a phone call with them and be like, yo, you guys suck. OK, but <laughs> let's actually do some uh, some finish. I, I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Angelica, you want to learn Finnish? 
Well, w welcome to the club. All right. I always just assume that everyone in my chat is a fluent Finnish speaker. And that's that's typically how it's worked, is that Finnish people are here just, I don't know. I, I Honestly, I don't know what the deal is, why they enjoy this, but we're, we're here. Okay. I start the timer. Newt. Keron sinole paivastani. Um, <laughs> in theater, <laughs> you you walk seen you walk seen a kahdeksan toista kilometria. Kahdeksan toista kilometriä. Juoksin. Kahdeksan toista kilometriä. Uh, on, on sä on keli on määrä ja kylmä. Oli märkä, määrä, märkä, oli märkä ja kylmä. <laughs> um, Tyler. Pitäisi jakaa, jakaa, minun pitäisi jakaa, M uh, minun minun pitäisi jakaa kokomukseni. Suomen opiskelusta. En tiedä, jos... Uh, tuo on oikea. Mutta... On... Uh, Hyvempi? En tiedä pitääkö. En tiedä jos. <laughs> en. <laughs> en tiedä jos. Tuo on oikea. <laughs> Mutta on parempi. Kuin minun suomeni. Ne. Minun, uh, minun suomeni on uh, huono. <laughs> huono? Suomen suomenki? Mitä? <laughs> What? No, on. Ei ole oikea. Märkä. Oh. Hyvempi. 
hyvä, parempi, paras. Joo. Janka kokomukseni. The National Coalition Party. <laughs> Meet that. Uh, um. Minusta tämä tämä käännös on huono. Uh, mi, mitä te ajattelette? Mieltä olette? Ajattelette. <laughs> uh oh. Oh my god. Olen Dumbi. Um. Oh. Ette. Te ette voi. Te ette voi. Uh. Näytä. Kän. Kännystä. Koko aikaa. <laughs> Te kaik. Sanoin. Uh, näyttä? Nähdä. Mutta nähdä on. To see. Uh, nähneet tä koko ajan. Koko ajan. <laughs> Minun uh, iso <laughs> isot kasvoni. Oli <laughs> isot. Miksi isot? Kasvoni. Olivat tiellä. Olivat tiellä. Like tie. Katu tie. Tiellä. <laughs> Ho hölmö. Hölmö. Ei. Tyhmä. Ei tyhmä, vaan hölmö. Kännös on ihan hyvä. Se ei ole hölmö. Se se ei ole hölmä vai tyhmä. Who 
kuulostaa suomalaiselta. Miksi? Mitä? Kulostaa. Se kulostaa. Suomalaiselta. Hmm. Suomalainen. Suomalainen on sana kuvaamaan asiaa, ei kieltä. Paitsi uh, sanot, kun sanot, suomalainen kieli. Suomen kieli. <laughs> Suomen kieli? Mutta... Suomalainen... Suomen kieli. Suomalainen mies. Suomalainen nainen. <laughs> Kulostaa... Kuulostaa. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. oh. Okay. Maybe I'll stop there. A lot of you got kicked out of the stream for reasons beyond human comprehension. Maybe it's just the AI. Just make just making decisions. Nope. You get bandwidth and you don't. And it was my my turn on the the chopping block. Um but no actually that was really good. That was really good practice. I mean, I went over 10 minutes. And yeah, it's like, see, this is the thing. Once you start trying to speak it, it's almost infuriating how weird Finnish is. And like the way that I would try to say it looks nothing like Google Translate. And then it's hard to know if like, well, Am I, if I'm saying it this way, does that mean I'm wrong? Or does it mean that Google Translate's a better approach to saying it? Or I feel like Google Translate was kind of wrong. It's like, wait, why did you, like, it made some mistakes early. I don't know if they were mistakes, but it was just sort of like, I had Sinola. Um, and then it just, it deleted it when I added an object. I can't remember what the sentence was, but yeah. Have I practiced the word for fork? <laughs> no, because I can never remember it. It's something Haruka, all right? Or it's Haruka. I don't know. It's one or the other. I can't remember. I'm just gonna say it quickly. I'll just be like, uh, like, Onko Sinola Haruka. How about that? Do you have a fork? And I said it in the partitive. All right. I gave a little extra ah at the end. <laughs> haruka. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yes. Lorelai, um, Google Translate is wrong, but not as wrong as it used to be. <laughs> P 
Partitive doesn't shorten the first A. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that was not, that's not what I intended to. <laughs> Haruka. There you go. How about that? Oh, Uncle Sinola. Haruka. Just to ask for a fork takes all of my effort and concentration. And it feels like the word fork takes forever. Is this why Finnish people are so quiet? Because just to say a sentence, you have to like, you know, wait for your long vowels to play their part, you know? <laughs> yeah, the double letters are complicated. It's a complicated relationship I have, all right? Veika haraka harukasi. What? What is? But I mean, yeah. Coming back to what I was saying, I was like, I should share my experience learning Finnish. Minun pitäisi. That's that's new to me. I don't really know how to say that. I should share. Yaka. That's to share. I remember that. My experience. Koko mukseni. I guess I was kind of confused. Like, I feel like this should be in the partitive experience. So I was kind of surprised that it was just koko muks. Unless that is the partitive. I don't think so. Or maybe, maybe yaka doesn't take the partitive. Uh, my experience learning Finnish. Suomen opi skelusta. Suomen is such a weird yeah I don't maybe that's I was confused here as well because at the end I was saying like yes yeah, that's why I got I was like it sounds Finnish because that's what you got you know I was trying to I was trying to translate some of the things you guys were saying in chat in English to me because I couldn't think of anything and I was like oh actually it'd be kind of interesting and you said uh, it's not dumb it sounds Finnish which was very nice of you to say that. Thank you. And uh, I was like, it sounds Finnish, became kulosta suomalaiselta. And that seemed wrong because when you're talking about the Finnish language, it's suom, like suomi. Puhun suomea, right? That's like the first thing you learn is that you don't say Puhun suomalainen, right? That does, that's, you, you don't say that, right? In English, Finnish, it's the same word for the language as it is for just saying a Finnish person. But in Finnish, it's a different, a different, different word. And so that's why then I was trying to explain suomalainen is a word to describe a thing. On sana ku, kuvaman asia. Kuva is like a picture. Kuvaman, I guess, is like to describe. That's yeah. I don't really know how to use this mon ending, but kuva must be to describe uh, a thing. Asia, partitive, except when you say the Finnish language. And then I guess I got corrected here because I guess you don't say suomalainen and kieli, you just say suomen kieli. But then I don't really know how much to trust Google Translate because it already messed up this. Right? Well, let me look in the, the chat. Maybe you guys are going to let me know. Ah, Suomalai Salta, you sound like a Finn. Exactly. That's okay. That's, that makes more sense. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, it sounds like Finnish. It sounds like the Finnish language. Let me type that. <laughs> Se kuulostaa suomen kiel, kieleltä. Kieleltä. Um, kuulostaa joltakin. Pitää jota. Oh, jo, jo, jolta kiel, kieltä. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's so many crazy things that happen. 
Koko Mukseni is about a political party. Where did that? Yeah. Why did Google Translate reference a political party? No, it's different. It's a different word. Koko Mukseni. I wish I could just click on one word and it would give me the... Is is it is it this coco mus coco musta? That means all black. <laughs> Oh, that's not it. Am I misspelling it? That's probably the thing. Kokemux. Kokemux. Experience. Kokea plus moose. Plus moose. Here we. Uh, experience. Ah, <sighs> yeah. There's a lot. There's just Google Translate didn't mess it up. Your pronunciation did. All right, JS. <laughs> uh, the parliamentary elections are coming up. Can I tell you about the, the, the this political party? Oh my gosh. Actually, something interesting did happen today. Uh, maybe I should try to say that really quickly. I'll try to say it in in Finnish. All right, but I'm going to use Google Translate to help me out here. Okay, hold on. Let's reload the music so we got a little background noise to help me. Um, okay. I can... I'm thinking... Okay. Oh, oh gosh, I have no idea how to say this. Kun. Cavelin. Cotona. On. Puistossa on elokuva. Kun kävelin kotiin, puistossa oli elokuvakuvaukset. Elokuvakuvaukset. Hmm. Ja... Uh, joku? Hmm. Oh. Hetki. Hello. Yoko Pusa Dewey. Minut. <laughs> Oh. Oli polion camera. Ja i mista. I missia. Siellä oli 
paljon kameroita. Ka- kameroita. I thought it would just be camera, paljon camera. But you uh, do you have to put camera in the partitive plural? Kameroita. Ja ihmisiä. That's why I just said ihmistä. There were paljon ihmistä. Do I have it, is it different if I say paljon ihmisiä versus paljon ihmisiä misia like There are too many combinations and permutations in this language. In English, it's just like the dog ran down the hill. It's just like da 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 da, and you're done. The words they don't change: the dog ran. Well, run ran past tense. That word changes, but it's two. It only changes one time. It goes from run to ran, and then it goes back. Actually, it's an interesting word in like. Old English, it was originally rin. The the present tense was rin, like sing, sang, sung. It was rin, ran, run. But then somehow the run became the present tense. It replaced rin. So rin is now run. I, the dog, well, runs. I run. Oh my gosh. I just feel like in English, it's just like just. You can pick the words from the dictionary and you can start speaking and you finish is like, ah, uh, no, we're gonna, there's too many. And then I go to Wiktionary and they're like, oh, by the way, here's like 14 words to choose from. Oh, also, did you know that I've got 27 other words hidden here? The extra, extra special possessive forms, you didn't know about them? Well, they're here for you to use. You know, good luck. Like, I, am I playing Dungeons and Dragons with a D20 die? I have to roll every time. I want to figure out which <laughs> which form. Except, put it, some of the words have like a hundred different versions. You know, I'm like, man. Right? Like, ich meinen. Yeah, this, this is the one. The declension. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry. You thought that this was a lot? Psych. There you go. Don't forget about the ich misila or the ich misixi. You never know when you're going to need that plural translative form. You don't, it, literally, you you will never know when you need it because it's it's <laughs> Did you guys watch the Disney Channel growing up? There's a oh guys 9:30. There was, I just saw Sista, and that made me think of Sista. And there was a, a show called Sista Sista. <laughs> what? It was, I, it came on at the same time or that the show um, That's So Raven was popular. Sister Sister Disney. But that it was like sister, sister. There was like some like the intro song of it. Yeah. <laughs> this. Let me show you. It was this show. Now if you'll be able to see it. Hold on. There you go. Disease twins. I don't know what I don't know what they're up to. I hope they're I hope they're doing well. And unlike their peers have not been traumatized <laughs> by the whole experience of being a child star. 
Anyway, sorry. Okay. I had to have my moment. All right. I had to have my moment. Wait, what? Luke Bland would ace this finish lesson. Well, look, not everyone can be Mr. Luke Bland, Mr. Perfect. All right. Some of us struggle. All right. And that's that's just where I am. <laughs> Balion ich mista sounds like you had body parts in the park. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it has to be plural then to refer to multiple people. Oh my gosh. Ate so much people in the park. I guess it, it would be like so much people versus so many people. Right? Yeah, different. I love people in the chat are just like different languages do different things. All right. <laughs> oh, behave. Ole ich misixi. I get to have my moments. All right, where I pull up Wiktionary and I look at the 38 different possible permutations of a single word, and I get upset about it. All right, and I blame the tularemia that is lingering in my body that makes me an irritable person. All right, it's not my fault. <laughs> oh, you didn't have Disney Channel when you were a kid? You might be better off, lad. <laughs> well, I remember when I was growing up, Disney changed. It was like, I, when I was really little, Disney was like just cartoons. And then suddenly they were like, Oh, we have to be all, we have to make all these shows, these live act. I don't know. It was, it was weird. It was a weird time. I always preferred the, the cartoons. That was my favorite thing. There was like Qu Donald Duck quack attack. That was my favorite. It was like 30 minutes where it was just a Donald Duck in 10. They were just showing boom, boom, boom. A bunch of Donald Duck episodes back to back. And they had this whole thing of called the quack attack between episodes where it like fired you up. It got you excited about the next Donald Duck cartoon. And he was always angry too. <laughs> was, there was like a thermometer and it was just Donald Duck getting really angry and his thermometer would go and then it would explode. And then I don't know, you'd go crazy or something. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the child star is messed up by their experience. Yeah, a lot of them, definitely. Yeah. Oh. Um. He, oh, Luke works as a bartender. Well, yeah, of course, this finish is going to be a lot better. Just from having to interact with people. I, know, I chose a career with minimal interaction. <laughs> I like to go to libraries. I'm introverted now. All right. I grew up pretty extroverted, but now I'm an introvert. Thank you very much. And I'll just keep to myself in my books in English. <laughs> Leave my my English brain alone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, on that note, uh, thank you all for being here <laughs> and putting up with this. Uh, we had a good, a good session, you know, um, we, we practiced some forest finish. Mostly, I just showed all the books that I got from the library. Um, and I complained quite a bit, actually, about, I told you some stories, about burning my hand and how I make pizza and how you should never put a pan in the oven because you're going to burn your hand on the handle. Not when you take it out, but after you take it out and forget about it on the on the stove or whatever, and you're going to touch it just out of habit. Don't do it. It hurts. Hurts like the devil. Oh, my gosh. Um, But yeah. Yeah, you're welcome, Vlad. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Also, he's been living for, in Finland for over 10 years. Well, how embarrassing that it took him that long to learn. 
Oh man, I, you know, I have actually been thinking that I'm, I really, at the moment, I'm only doing the, the spoken finish like with this with you guys on stream. I feel like I would benefit a lot from forcing myself to do it every day and just setting a timer and then just going to town trying to say everything that comes to mind like because like there will be all sorts of times where like I wish I could say something and finish in the moment but then when I get home I don't remember you know to look it up or something and so now it's like that'll be a daily thing I should be doing because I'm kind of past the Duolingo stage of just memorizing vocabulary and you know random sentences and basic grammar because like this this, I, I felt like I was just saying very simple stuff. And I was just constantly baffled and confused. Yeah. It was all, yeah, every other word in this translation. And then I was like, well, am I learning the real finish? You know, like, or is this just Google Translate giving me some weird forms and it would it be wrong to learn it this way but that's better than than nothing actually i do want to look at some other translation services i feel like i've heard there's a there's another one that's quite good for finnish i should check that out or maybe i just need to ask chat gpt <laughs> apparently chat gpt is really good in finnish so i could just <laughs> try that out yeah oh no you guys are all getting kicked out yeah my internet is just it's gone it's been terrible today. Um, yeah, talking more often. Yeah, reading, writing is different skill set. Yeah. Deep L. I'm going to make a note of that. Let me look it up. Deep L translator. Ah. Cool. Deep L. A neural machine translation service from 2017. Yeah, I'll give this one a try. And maybe if I like it, I can pull it up. Um, here, I'll actually. One second. Maybe I can pull it down here and you guys can see it for a second. But really quickly I'll just copy and paste this and then look that seems the same the first sentence seems the same to me Swolman Kielen oh it's different it just says Swolman Opiskelusta this one actually says the Finnish language and then it gives me a different word. Op opimisesta. And then, en tiedä onko se oikein, which is different from Google Translate, which gave me pitäkö. Paikansa. Maybe that's just a different way of saying it. Cause like that's weird. Bike. I didn't know you could use bike like place to refer to something being correct. Maybe like it's in its place. I don't know if that is in place correct. But it is better than my finish. Queen minun suomeni. Let's see what did it say here. Mutta se on parempi kuin minun suomen kieleni. So it actually gave the full again. I feel like this is better or like, and this makes more sense to me than Google Translate. It might not actually be better, better. Yeah, this was also different. Kuvakuvaus. Whereas over here, Google Google's like there's set. There was a film shoot. Why did Google Translate make it plural? There was only one film shoot, not multiple. Whereas this actually just gave me the singular. 
sillä oli paljon kameroita ja ihmisiä. There you go. Anywho. <laughs> um, oh, Luke taught Finnish to Dave Cat. Well, maybe I need a special <laughs> Luke Bland uh, tutoring session. He can impart the wisdom to me. Um, Deep L is better. Yeah, maybe we can try Deep L from now on. Beat that bike. Gonsa is correct for being correct. <laughs> I gotta think about that, but yeah, I think that's correct. It's not the only option. Okay. Yeah. Have I rated your picture in the Discord? Not yet, but let me take a quick look. It was in the food. The vis, vis pipuro, the whipped porridge. It looks kind of weird. Is it in milk? Well, I will give you... I'll give you a living time. And actually, if anyone is here and they would like to join the Discord, I will uh, leave the uh, the link here for you so you can join. I haven't shared it in a, in a while, so... Anyone that wants to join the Discord is welcome. It's mostly just 27 posting food pictures. <laughs> we lo I love it though. I mean, I'm not saying you should uh, slow down or anything, uh, but yeah, we got some channels in there. We got like Finnish grammar explanations, um, but food, music, memes, ideas. Um, and then there's also a Stardew channel that is, in my opinion, most underutilized. I don't think you guys realize that. Um, all right. And if you response, all right, to your, to your problem and you get tips. Actually, someone came into one of my, my Stardew stream a while back and I stayed an extra like 30 hour at the end of my stream, just explaining all of my top tips to this person. <laughs> that is how passionate I was. I was like, oh yeah, you definitely got to get, go to the mines, get the basic sprinklers, go, go to the, the, whatever the, the festival and get the strawberry seeds and, and plant those. And I was, yeah, <laughs> I got, I'm, I'm full of tips when it comes to Stardew. So there you go. Um, yeah, someone has to do it. I know. No, it's fun. It's cool. You guys have been really cool with the 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 Discord. So thank you for making it a fun place. Um, but yeah, I am gonna keep working on my issues. I might take some time tomorrow to test out this microphone, figure out what the issue is. Um, if yeah, what could be causing it? Then um, it might also be a Discord thing. I don't. I don't know. Then also look into the internet stuff a little bit more. Yeah, there's just a lot to do. So, um, and then, yeah, maybe we can do a Stardew stream tomorrow. And yeah, this, this stream is just deteriorating. So maybe it's a good time for me to end. And uh, yeah, so with that, I'll say thank you guys. I hope you learned a little finish. I did. <laughs> it was hard, but um, we made it. And I'm glad that you're here. And um, yeah, I'll be back probably tomorrow with some Stardew. But if you just want the Finnish language streams, I do this every Tuesday around 7 p.m. Um, so um, yeah, if I don't see you in the Stardew streams, hopefully I will see you next week in another Finnish language stream. So in the meantime, yeah, take care. And um, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.